Hey guys, did you know that I have a Patreon where you can support me and plus get awesome rewards? Or if you're thinking to yourself, but Julian, I want even more bang for my buck while still supporting you, you can pop over to my Redbubble and check out my awesome store with new designs appearing regularly. But for now, enjoy the video you're about to watch. Hey everyone, it's me, Julian Greystoke, and Nigel. Today I'm wearing my salt shirt. Oop. And we are talking about a book today that I had some very mixed feelings about called Afterworlds. What's, what's this book about? Let's just get right into it. This book is split in two between the story of a young, young author, I believe she's like 17 or 18, who has written a book called Afterworlds. It was about a girl who dies and then she has the ability to travel in like this afterlife state and she meets a handsome boy and all of that. And so uh, it's a pretty standard paranormal romance type of story that she has written. And so we follow both this, the story that she wrote and also the young author as she experiences what it is like to have this book being published and being, her publishers are really, really excited about it. So she gets an excellent advance. And also she's struggling to write the sequel to it. And she has moved out and to, I think New York, I think she moves to New York with her own like beautiful loft apartment, whatever. And she gets a new girlfriend and lots of new things are happening for her. So we just kind of follow those parallel every other chapter stories of the girl who wrote and the story that is written. And I'm not sure how I feel about this. It seems like a cool concept. I don't know. I don't love the back and forth. I was really not interested in the paranormal romance story at all. So I kind of got bored with those chapters after the first one. The first one is very engaging and also it's brought up in, in the context of the book that the publishers love the first chapter as well. So that was an interesting side of it. But yeah, I wasn't sure how I felt about the split and I might have just enjoyed better a story about a girl publishing her first book and maybe a few excerpts from that story and not like the whole thing. Now we get into the reason I'm very salty about this book. I did write her age down. She's 18 years old. So we have a main character who is 18 years old. She wrote this book for NaNoWriMo. She did not edit it. She sent it out. She sent it out and she got an an agent or a publisher, I don't even know. But she sent out an unedited NaNoWriMo story and got an agent slash publisher slash book deal with the first one she sent out. And she doesn't even know how to query. Like they tell talk about later how she had no idea what she was doing with her query letter. And it just makes me want to slam my head into a wall because this is not how the publishing industry works. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Holy shit. Like maybe once in a million years this might happen for someone, but it is not going to happen for really anyone. It's like winning the fucking lottery. And I know that seems very tempting, but I think that this book could actually be harmful and disheartening for young authors who might be reading it, who legitimately believe that they can send out an unedited first draft, which is I mean, everybody's unedited first draft is a piece of crap, and you cannot send that to agents, and you cannot use that to get a book deal. What is this nonsense? I hated it. Like, how hard would it be to make the story more realistic by having her edit it, and having her query for a while, and having her go through the normal struggles that authors go through, rather than having her be this sort of somehow book Wonderkind. Very frustrating to read as an author who is querying right now. Do not recommend this for a book for authors who are querying because holy cow it made me so angry. Again I had more frustration than sympathy for our lead character as she struggles with the trials of just having been given a giant advance and a great book deal and uh, they want the sequel and she's just having to deal with all of that and it's like oh poor baby. People want your book, you poor, poor thing. I just, most of the time I wanted to punch her in her stupid smug 18 year old face. I did like uh, the girlfriend and that side of the story was pretty well done, I thought. I like that it's sort of incidental that she is gay, that she's, I believe, bi, because um, she's had boyfriends before as well, I think. And 
it's, you know, she goes and she gets this new relationship and it's all the trials of getting a new relationship and being two writers in a relationship with each other and how that works out. I thought that side of it was very interesting and that it was sort of incidental that it was a woman that she was in a relationship with. Like it comes up a little bit, but it's really not like the focus of the story. It's not a coming out story. It's not our, her, oh, look at the gay girl story. It's just a story where the main character also happens to be a bisexual. I noticed that the writing voice, the literary voice of both the story about the author and the story within a story were very much the same and I feel like it should have been different. Like that would have been really challenging for the overall author of Afterworlds, but I feel like the voice of an 18 year old girl writing her first ever story could have come out a lot more in Afterworlds of the story within a story. This is very confusing. <laughs> but yes, they sound the same, and it's really obvious that the same person wrote the real life story and the story within. I will say that aside from the incredible wish fulfillment beginning of the story where she just gets everything that every writer ever wanted, the part where she starts struggling to write a sequel and she realizes how challenging the life of a writer can be is a little bit more realistic. It's again still me being like, oh, you poor thing. You have to write for a living. Damn, who would ever want that? It was accurate in that she was struggling with writing her sequel. She didn't realize how deadlines would be. She didn't realize how editor's notes would be and, you know, the frustration of that. So I liked that part of it. However, when she meets other authors and critics and such, they are all in a hurry to suck her metaphorical lady cock because they just like, this book is so good. Oh my gosh, praise, praise, praise. She never really has to deal with anybody who really tears her book down, which is kind of disappointing because those people definitely exist. And the story within the story of this book is definitely one that people would have been like, mm, it's okay, but it's not great if this was real life. So ultimately, I think this book is probably a more harmful to young writers than it is helpful and encouraging to them which is too bad because I don't read enough books about writers and just the everyday struggles of being a writer. And throughout this book you keep expecting the other shoe to drop. You keep expecting to find out that something has gone wrong, that her her advance isn't enough, that she doesn't manage to write the sequel, that nothing ultimately works out for her. But no, her life just pretty much like this book could be kind of boring in the fact that you're just watching a girl have it all. The main like struggle, the main other shoe dropping is that later she has troubles with her girlfriend because they kind of jumped into a relationship too fast. But you never see her really hit a wall with the writing. She struggles, but she never comes to a super low point with the writing. The other shoe with her writing story never drops. And it ultimately it does turn out that it's just the best possible case scenario for an author in this story. And finally, the last thing I have is that this book kind of touches on some issues but seems afraid to really bring them up. Um, because the main character is Indian American, although she doesn't really practice her family's religion and such, she does use some of it in her story and the book touches on the idea of the potential cultural appropriation where she picks and chooses little bits of her culture to fictionalize them to have a handsome god as like her romantic interests and stuff like that but the book never really delves into it and it never picks a side and I kind of wish that it would have gone into it a lot more about how authors have to deal with finding out that they accidentally culturally appropriated something or finding out that you know even though she is Indian maybe other Indian people reading this book were insulted by her use of her own culture but most of the other authors that she interacts with just kind of hand wave it away like oh I was accused of cultural misappropriation too and it's just something that people say it's fine ultimately it doesn't matter and I didn't I didn't like that aspect of it the author could have really talked about something and shied away from it 
and I've, it, I felt it harmed this book. So those are my thoughts on Afterworlds. It was an interesting read and it kept me interested until the end, but ultimately it was very disappointing because of the ultimate wish fulfillment and the backing away of talking about real difficult issues that you have as an author in the real world. I wish that this book had been braver. I wish that this book had been darker. But if you are looking for a book where you can just wish fulfillment and pretend that you are this main character who's getting everything she ever wanted as an author, then Afterworlds might be the book for you. Anyway guys, did any of you read Afterworlds? What did you think about it? Comment below and let me know. Do you know any other stories about authors who are just living that author life? Recommend, please. As you guys know, I post new videos Mondays and Fridays. All the links to my social media are in the doobly-doo for ease of your clicking. And if you liked this review and you want to see more reviews like it, I have been posting two videos a week for my entire life. Now that's an exaggeration, but for a really long time. So my channel is chock full of content for you. And if you liked what you saw here but wish it was higher quality, like you want to see every hair on Nigel's butt, I don't know why you would. But if that's a goal of yours, you can support me on Patreon where all of the donations go towards getting me better equipment. And I will see you again next time with whatever it is I happen to be doing next time. Bye! Well, what do you know? It's shout out time again. Time to shout out to my patrons Lennox, Amanda, Ashley, Celia, Kim, Lisa, Ramona, Sabby Panda, and Sarah. Wow, that is a lot of awesome people supporting me, and if you want to be great like all of these people, then you can become my patron over on Patreon.